Hello everyone, welcome back to the another virtual class of uh, history. So today we are going to discuss a very new topic uh, that is uh, United Nation Organization. So in this chapter, <coughs> we'll discuss about uh, uh, why this organization was formed, what were the objectives of uh, United Nation and then <coughs> we'll discuss about uh, some of the important organs of United Nations uh, in detail and then uh, we'll discuss about uh, some of the important agencies uh, which help us uh, United Nations organization uh, for achieving its objectives. So let's start our today's class. So as you all know that uh, Second World War brought lot of uh, death and devastations everywhere throughout the world. So with the uh, dropping of atom bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, large uh, scale destructions was uh, seen in Japan. So it was not only Japan, but uh, whoever, whichever countries were involved in the war directly or indirectly, they all had to face uh, a lot of uh, uh, <coughs> sufferings and a uh, lot of destructions were witnessed by the world during the Second World War. So you can see that uh, the two great wars. You can see the First World War also brought death and devastation uh, to um, uh, stop all the future wars. The League of Nations was formed, but League of Nations also could not uh, stop the wars, which uh, later on came to be known as the Second World War. So two horrible wars, okay, the First World War and the Second World War. We can say that uh, in the Second World War, uh, people saw or witnessed uh, uh, destructive weapons like uh, atom bomb and all okay vast scale casualties were there destruction of properties were there okay so the people all over the world <coughs> the people all over the world uh, became very much anxious for peace and security what should be done because uh, war is not the solution of peace war is not going to bring peace though you may be a winner you can win on one side but uh, you also will suffer the both the sides suffers equally okay so then there was a, a feeling among the world powers that uh, we need to have a organization for the maintenance of international peace and security so for that uh, the initiatives were taken by the big powers like uh, america uh, the president of america uh, president roosevelt and uh, churchill the prime minister of uh, great britain <coughs> so the origin of united nations uh, we can say that on 14th of uh, august 1941 you can see here uh, the world war second came to an end in the year 1945 but the process started from 1941 okay so on 14th of august 1941 okay in the middle of the uh, we can say the atlantic ocean two great leaders met on the board of ship that was uh, uh, president roosevelt of america and the prime minister churchill they met on the ship on on the atlantic ocean and there the discussions which uh, came out resulted uh, in the uh, formation of Atlantic Charter. Certain guidelines were prepared by these two leaders. So it hap it started in 1941. So again, uh, after that, in 1943, the Conference of Foreign Ministers, like uh, Russia, uh, China, England, America. Okay, so uh, recognized that uh, there is a necessity for the establishment of uh, uh, international organization for the maintenance of peace and security. So it is very, very important that we need to discuss regarding the formation of uh, international organization. <coughs> so uh, England, uh, Russia, America, China, now they drafted a proposal. Now they started preparing the proposal and, uh, and the organizations uh, uh, that means the proposals uh, was drafted and they met in uh, uh, <clears throat> the Dumbarton Ox Conference in the year 1944. In 1944, all these important leaders they met at uh, the conference, which came to be known as uh, Dumbarton Ox Conference. 
so whatever they drafted in dumbarton house conference okay so later on united nation charter was also prepared and all the uh, members whoever were present uh, uh, and who had supported for the international peace and security like uh, 50 uh, states the 50 states met at uh, San Francisco in the year 1945. Draft was already prepared in 1944 and on the basis of that draft uh, in the year 1945 in a place called San Francisco the leaders met and altogether 50 delegates of the 50 states were present in the San Francisco conference. Okay, And <clears throat> thus on 24th of October 1945. Thus, we must remember 24th of October 1945, United Nation Organization was born. United Nation Organization was born on the on, on 24th of October 1945. Okay. So now from here onward, we'll discuss some of the details about uh, the United Nation Organization and some of the major agencies of United Nation Organization. Okay, so we need to understand that uh, this is a preparation. I have done it over here to, in order to save time. Okay, UNO is the shortest form of United Nations organization. United Nations organization that means all the peace loving nations united together for the maintenance or the, for the preservation of uh, peace and security throughout the world because this countries also understood that uh, finally that uh, peace cannot be brought by fighting war. So, war is not the solution of peace, they understood it because first world war also had brought death and devastation, second world war also brought death and devastation, everywhere sufferings were there. So, what to do? We need to have a strong organization for the maintenance of international peace and security. So, for that uh, United Nations organization came into existence. Okay. So, when this organization was formed, so it is mentioned over here. You can see here, 24th of October 1945, United Nations Organization was uh, formed. Okay, United Nations Organization was formed in the year 1945. So it is mentioned over here. Okay, now uh, where is the headquarter of United Nation? Where is the headquarter of United Nation? You can see here, New York. So it is very very simple. Sometimes you may be asked, so where is the headquarter of United Nation? You can write down New York. Okay, got it? Now what is the flag how does the flag look like you can see here the flag of united nation organization is light blue in color with a un emblem and a polar map of the world in white polar map of the world in white you can see the picture i have given it over here okay now next one is uh, what is the official language of uh, united nation organization so you can see here french is there russians is there spanish is there english of course is there Chinese is there, Arabic is there. So apart from this, apart from this also, if uh, uh, other languages uh, uh, wants uh, to speak in the General Assembly or on the platform of United Nations, that can be allowed and that uh, provision is also there. But these are some of the important languages of uh, official languages of uh, United Nations organizations. We can call it UN also, United Nations. Okay. Now, you can see here, how many members are there at present? That means uh, membership. Who can be the member of United Nations? Who can? It's very, very simple, my dear. All the peace-loving nations uh, can become the member of United Nations. So, at present, how many countries are the members of United Nations? 193. How many? 193. Okay. 193 members are there in the United Nations organization. Okay. Now, after this, these are the basic things like uh, on 24th of October 1945, United Nations was formed. New York is the headquarter of uh, UNO. Okay, this is the flag. These are the official languages. You can go through it. Then membership, you can see at present 193 members are there. Okay, now what are the objectives of United Nations? Why was United Nations formed? We all know it because United Nations was formed in order to maintain international peace and security that we all know it. But apart from that, what other objectives are there that we have to go through? So I have written it down. You can see here to preserve peace and security. 
okay to preserve peace and security and to eliminate wars that means in future uh, if there is a situation like a war like situation that that has to be avoided that has to be avoided at any cost because that is the only means through which we can maintain international peace and security okay so we can also say in different words like uh, to save the succeeding generation from the scourge of war so we can save that means our main intention or motive should be to save the coming generation from the scourge of a war okay so that is all about maintenance of international peace and security now number two you can see here to develop friendly relations so of course we need to develop friendly relations so friendly relation means if everywhere throughout the world if each and every countries maintains friendly relations then definitely there won't be any war there won't be any war so that is how united nation organization wants to develop international peace as well as to develop friendly relations among the different countries of the world now number 3 you can see here to create faith in human rights that means every country should create faith in human rights that means human rights must be granted to the people of uh, the respective countries so each and every people living in different different parts of the country must be given human rights so that is mentioned in the united nation declaration of human rights that is mentioned in charter of the united nation uh, charter okay like we have got our human rights in the form of uh, fundamental rights so our constitution has given us the fundamental rights so that is the rights given to the humans of our country right so different different countries have been given rights to different different ways through the through the through the constitution of the respective countries now number 4 you can see here to promote social progress there should be a social progress and better standard of life so the main focus of the country should be to 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 promote social progress as well as better standard of living so it is not that i am going to think only about my country i have enough so i can think about other countries also i can help the uh, developing countries and underdeveloped countries poor nations are there in the world so the big rich nations they can provide help in uh, securing social progress as well as uh, standard of life of the people can be raised by their help many small small countries poor countries are there they are provided help by the uh, richer countries of the world so that way my dear it is not about rich and poor the main agenda or the main motive of a united nation is to bring everybody to the equal footing and treat everybody equally and if somebody is lagging behind give hand to them lift them up bring them up so that they can also lead their life happily and peacefully they lead the life means the people of the country can lead their life happily and peacefully and their standard of living will also go high so this is all about the objectives of united nations so these are some of the objectives of united nation organizations okay now apart from uh, this this is the important objectives okay the principles are also there like principles uh, suppose for example what are the principles of united nations it doesn't mean that once you become the member of a league of nation means you are going to lose your sovereignty it is not like that you will be a independent country there won't be any interference in your country right being a united nation members doesn't mean that america will interfere no it's not like that okay you will have uh, your full sovereign power to run your country one thing must be there that you whenever required whenever uh, required uh, whenever there is a requirement for the maintenance of international peace then you should come forward is an every nation should come forward okay so it is not the uh, united nation doesn't belong to america britain or france it belongs to every peace loving nation so your contribution should also be there equally equal contribution should be there so this is all about this is all about uh, uh, the objectives of united nation organization now <coughs> actually i'm my voice today is something different because i'm suffering from throat infection okay so anyhow it's a practice to clear my voice also now organs of united nation you can see here all together five organs are there one organs uh, i have not written because it is not uh, functioning at present okay now first one is general assembly number 2 we have security council number 3 economic and social council and international court of justice and one more is there the secretariat the secretariat is also there okay the secretariat is also there so that we will discuss one by one so all these things are not required so as per your reduced syllabus it is mentioned that uh, 
just the names we have to mention so simple you can see a general assembly security council economic and social council international court of justice so but still once we have started that chapter i would like to give you a short detail about uh, all this uh, uh, composition and functions you can see general assembly is composed of all the all the members of united nations are the members of general assembly number one okay then what are how, how what is the process that every year every year in the month of september they meet in a place okay in anywhere in the world and they will discuss about uh, some of the important uh, uh, functions of uh, united nations okay so every year every year in the month of september uh, annual session is held and in these sessions uh, uh, discussions regarding the uh, international orders are discussed over there like uh, 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 like uh, uh, pollution is there, right? Uh, uh, terrorism is there. All these are discussed in this uh, and all. Uh, every nations they uh, participate in these sessions. Okay. So what are the functions of General Assembly? Simple one thing: to maintain international peace and security. What say whichever threat are there that has to be eliminated. Okay. So we are not going to discuss all this because we are not required because this time in the review syllabus uh, composition as well as uh, function is not asked. Okay. Now you can see here just one more topic we'll discuss over here. This one, number two, Security Council. So here we discuss no uh, what is the composition of General Assembly. General Assembly is composed of all the members of the United Nations. That means all the members of the United Nations are the members of General Assembly. That is very simple. Now Security Council. Security Council is composed of 15 members. Security Council is composed of how many members? 15 members. So out of 15, out of 15 you can see here I'll let it 10, 5. 10 is uh, uh, 5 is permanent. Okay, and uh, non okay, so five members are permanent and ten are non permanent. Okay, the security council all together 15 members are there out of uh, 15, 10 are non permanent and five are permanent. So, this 10 permanent members are elected by security council as well as the uh, general assembly for the term of two years. For the term of how many years? Two years okay two years and this five permanent members these five permanent members are there from the beginning of the formation of united nation organization okay so which are the permanent members and why india today india also wants to be the permanent member of security council that is a big deal we are will i'll explain you that like uh, uh, usa uk france russia and china once again usa UK, France, Russia and China. These are the five permanent members who enjoys veto power. Whenever any decision is to be taken out, whenever any decision is to be taken. So this five important power, five important members plays a very, very important role because they have a veto power. Veto power means power to say no. Suppose, for example, we want to uh, <clears throat> we want to declare Azhar Mazud as a, a terrorist, global terrorist okay we have to declare it so if all the 10 permanent members they say yes we have to declare it and out of these five if four says yes and only one says no then entire uh, resolution will become no okay if china does not support suppose last year china did not support no so be, because of china's uh, uh, disagreement uh, that could not be done so i mean to say that if all the 15 members agrees then only then only this is this will be taken okay now you may say that uh, what is the use of 10 per so they also have an important role to play but uh, the most important role is played by the five important uh, members permanent members who enjoy veto power. as i told you know all the 14 says yes and only one says no one means out of these five from the permanent member says no then the entire resolution will become no so that is the veto power enjoyed by the members uh, permanent members of the security council so what is the meaning what is the meaning of the term veto veto power is the power to say no or to give a negative vote that is the veto power of the permanent member so if india also becomes a part of uh, the security council's permanent members then definitely uh, most of the obstacles which are in the path of uh, indian success and progress will also be sorted out okay so this is all about uh, 
the United Nations. So one more is there you can see here, International Court of Justice. So uh, the internal domestic problems are sorted out in the con courts which are there in our country. But uh, what about the international disputes? Whenever there is a dispute between two countries, where to go? So International Court of Justice is there where uh, discussions uh, and the disputes related to international uh, forums are sorted out uh, very, very peacefully and with uh, uh, proper guidelines. Okay. So this is all about, uh, this is all about <coughs> This is all about uh, United Nations organizations uh, organs. Okay, so now uh, we'll try to uh, discuss uh, some of the major agencies of United Nations organization. The major agencies of United Nations organizations we are going to discuss. Okay, so so the last part uh, of uh, this I have written it over here major agencies of United Nations, UNICEF is there, then WHO is there, then UNESCO is there, okay. UNICEF full form is United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, this much you have to remember. WHO World Health Organization, which was established in the year uh, 7th of April 1948, then uh, uh, UNESCO, UNESCO is there, uh, UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. Okay, so this was established in the year 16th of November 1946. So this one you have to remember only the, this one you have to remember only the full form. Okay, what is the full form of UNICEF, WHO and UNESCO. So here functions are not at all required. So these are some of the major agencies uh, which help us, which helps United Nations to achieve its uh, objectives. Okay, so let us now go back to the main board. So these are some of the important uh, agencies as I uh, discussed uh, right now. So UNICEF is there, WHO is there, UNESCO is there. Okay. So you have to just go through the full form only. Okay. Nothing much is asked. So this is all about from this uh, chapter United Nations Organization. Like it is mentioned, major agencies of United Nations, UNESCO, WHO and uh, UNICEF. Only names and expansion of the abbreviations are required. So nothing much we have to do. So once again, let us recap. So this is all about United Nations organization. When it was formed, 24th October 1945, New York is the cap uh, headquarter. Okay, flag. These are some of the languages. 193 members are there at present. Okay, these are the objectives. That's one objective you must remember to maintain international peace and security and to save the succeeding generation from the scourge of war. And then. 15 permanent members are there in Security Council. Security Council, one of the most important organs of United Nations. 10 are permanent and 5 are non-permanent. Okay, so this is all about from this chapter. So, hope you all have understood it. So, uh, in the next class, we'll discuss uh, some other important topics. So, till then, please take care of yourself. Take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.